What's up YouTube? How are you doing today? I'm Chanda D, your Techno Dad, and in this video, we're gonna see if 80 Hertz is the proper crossover for your speakers. And we're gonna get into it right after the jump. And I'm back. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Chana, and I've been into home theater for the last 25 years. Not only that, I'm also a working DJ and music producer. So if you want to learn how to properly set up your speaker system, you've come to the right place, and you should consider subscribing. All right, everyone, where are we going to cross over these speakers at? That's pretty much the question, and it's a very hot topic. I know a couple years ago, I believe I had a Denon AVR. I was showing some sort of setup, and at that point in time, I was actually experimenting with different crossover points for my main speakers and my center channel. And there was a whole bunch of comments in the comment section saying, oh, you got your crossovers all wrong. What are you talking about? What are you doing? You don't know anything. And it was actually pretty funny. So why don't we uh, get into the standards first and see why THX has dubbed these the uh, standard, and then we'll get into what I think and how to apply it to your speakers. All right, so I'm sure you may know, and if you don't, hey, great, I'm glad you're here to learn something new. The standard, the THX standard, that is, is 80 hertz and that's where you cross over all your speakers well at least with the ear level speakers i'm not talking about any kind of atmos or height channels right now we're just talking about the ear level speakers so the five and a 5.1 or the seven and a 7.2 or whatever you like to call it that's what we're going to be talking about today so the standard is 80 but that's not for your subwoofer your subwoofer is supposed to be at 120 and that's what a lot of avrs default the lfe channel to 120 hertz so we've got 80 hertz here and we've got 120 hertz here. So we've got about 40 hertz of overlap. And what this means is, you know, the low end of your ear level speakers will stop at 80 hertz. I mean, it doesn't stop exactly at 80 hertz. Usually it rolls off at a slope of like 24 decibels per octave, that kind of thing. And uh, your subwoofer will go up to 120 hertz and it'll roll off there. Now, if you don't know what any of this means or would like a visual representation, let's jump onto the computer and check out what it looks like in Logic Pro. So here we have a blank project and I've opened up an EQ. I'll set up 80 hertz for the top end and 120 hertz for the bottom. Now here's where they overlap, but we can't really see what's going on. So to better illustrate, I'm just gonna swap these two so we can see the overlap a little bit better. So this is the overlapping area where these frequencies are played on both your speakers and your subwoofer. So why 80 Hertz? Why is 80 Hertz the standard? That's a great question, right? So if we go and look at some speakers, let's look at MNK, Miller and Kreisel. They specifically make THX certified speakers. And what you'll notice is these are all very small. They all have LCRs or left, center, rights. As you can see in the picture here, these are your left, center, and right channels. You'll notice that five and a quarter inches is the largest size diameter driver in these speakers. And if we look at the frequency response, we see they go down to 75 Hertz. This is why 80 Hertz is the THX standard. The LCRs are small speakers and don't go low frequency wise. All the bass is managed by the subwoofer. So if you have a satellite or bookshelf speaker system with a subwoofer, 80 Hertz is probably where you're gonna wanna be at. Now, for instance, I'm actually reviewing a 5.1 cent over by Martin Logan, and it's made out of their smaller speakers, the Motion 4Is, which have a four inch driver. That frequency response on those speakers are from 70 to 23 kilohertz, and that makes sense to have you know, an 80 hertz crossover point. So the big question is, what if you have large towers or a three-way center channel? Well, surely they can handle more than you know, 80 hertz. They can go lower than that for sure, right? For instance, I have a pair of Klipsch RF73s uh, that were sent in to review from Corey. So thank you, Corey, for sending those in. By the way, if you guys wanna pick up some RF73s for yourself, I'll put Corey's link down in the description for you guys to check it out. Anyway, these speakers go down to 32 hertz. So why would I wanna set the crossover at 80 hertz and just like cut them off at the legs? Like that doesn't make any sense to me. And these speakers are phenomenal, like phenomenal. 
wow, just crazy. They got a lot of bass, they got dual 10 inch drivers, so they can definitely handle bass. So what do you do in that situation? So what I did was use the bathhouse and nightclub scene in John Wick to test the crossover frequencies. Now, of course, this scene has a whole lot of stuff going on. There's gunshots, people screaming, quiet music, loud music, glass shattering, all this people communicating on, you know, the radios and all kinds of stuff going on. So the scene has a lot of different sounds that that go all through the frequency range. So I figured this would be a good way for me to kind of dial in my crossover point. So I went with an 80 hertz crossover, watched the scene, then selected 70, watched it, 60, 50, 40, you get the idea. Now, I noticed something at 50 that I, you know, I started to go back and forth between 80 and 50, 80 and 50. And that was drastic enough for me to notice that there's actually a fuller sound coming in at 50 hertz. And you know, the RF 73s have dual 10 inch drivers on both. So there's four 10 inch drivers. The subwoofer is the SVS PB 4000. So it's a 13 and a half inch woofer. And then we got the four 10s. That actually made a fuller sound with everything that was going on from the music to the like, grunting and the people knocking things over and everything happening you know that was super full when i had the crossover point at 50 as opposed to 80 because now we're actually using those you know four 10 inch drivers along with the 13 and a half inch driver in the pb4000 so that's something to definitely think about when you're you know you've got all this equipment and you're kind of just not using the base at all in your towers. So next on my list was trying to dial in the center channel, which is the Klipsch RC643. It's the matching center channel for the RF73s, and I know that it goes down to 57 hertz. So I tried it with 80, 70, and 60, and what I noticed is that 70 seemed to be better than 60 and better than 80. And that's what I went with. Now there's a lot of gunfire coming out of that screen. So a lot of the gunshots are coming out from there along with voices and everything like on screen, like people screaming, running out of the way, you know, that kind of stuff. And the dudes on the radio, he's here, he's here, John Wick's here, you know, that kind of thing. So it was a great scene to test it out. And I landed on 70 Hertz for my crossover point on that specific center channel. So here's my recommendation for you guys. Test things out. Put in a movie scene that you've seen a bunch of times, preferably something that you like, obviously, right? It's always gonna be something that you like instead of something you don't like. And try the scene out at 80 hertz and then go down to 70, go down to 60, go down to 50. But make sure you look up what your speakers can handle and where they naturally roll off. So if they roll off at 40, you know, try them at 50, 60, 70, see where that nice uh, balance is that you know it fills in that little gap with your subwoofer you know it could work out really well for you guys and maybe it could not now, it's totally subjective so make sure that whatever changes you make and that you like keep it there see what it's like for like a week at that crossover point and and then go back to 80 and listen again and see if that's actually making a difference and that's actually making your sound better that's my main advice for you guys right now. Now this topic is very subjective because it's all based on your listening and your room and your content and all that kind of stuff. So it's really funny for me to hear all these people like telling me I'm totally wrong when there really are no wrong answers because it is so subjective. Now it's totally fine to just set your crossover point at 80 hertz and move on and you're good. You know, especially if you have bookshelves or satellites. However, if you do have, you know, large uh, towers and or a, you know, a center channel that's a three-way center channel that can go lower, you might want to try and mess around with the crossover points just to see if you can get a better sound. And I would also recommend, you know, doing your mains first and then your center channel. Don't change all of them because then it's harder to distinguish. You know, if you make two changes, it's harder to distinguish both changes at once instead of distinguishing the one change. So I would start off with the mains first, listen, adjust, listen, adjust, listen, adjust, and actually evaluate if the sound is better or not, and then move forward. You're probably saying to yourself, that's such a small difference that you can't hear that kind of thing. 
I mean, you know, I listen, like critically listen to music and sound as my job. That's what I do. You know, I'm a music producer, I'm a DJ, and even when I host my karaoke night, guess what I'm doing? I'm balancing the incoming vocal signal from whoever's singing with the background track and balancing those two signals with the EQ, one for the vocal, one for the track, and I'm doing it all live. So this is what I do, like, this is what I do all the time. So hearing slight differences here and there, you know, I can hear that. The, the song that you guys hear every time you watch one of my videos, it's called Forever, it's one of my songs, and even that has like, you know, uh, 25 tracks, meaning kick drum, snare drum, there's a clap, there are hi-hats, everything like that. All of those little individual tracks that make up the song, there's like 25, maybe 27 of them, I haven't looked, it's been, it's been quite a while. But I've listened to that song like hundreds of times while I was mixing, and guess what? Each of those tracks have an EQ. So along the whole like frequency range, audio spectrum, you know, that's my job is to balance all these sounds that come in at all these different frequencies. So just adjusting, you know, 10, 10 hertz here, 20 hertz there, it is kind of a big difference and I can hear it. Even if you can't, there will be someone that will. And even if you can't hear it, you might even just be able to feel or notice a little change in the sound, whether it's better or worse, that's really up to you guys. All right guys, so to wrap up this video, 80 Hertz is the crossover standard set by THX. And that's fantastic, especially if you have bookshelf speakers with the sub or satellite speakers with the sub. However, if you do have large tower speakers that'll go lower than 80 Hertz and a three-way center channel that goes lower than 80 Hertz, you might wanna try and dial those in a little bit, experiment with different crossover points to um, you know, just kinda uplift your sound a little bit. Just make it that just that much better. And of course, this is subjective. So if it sounds better to you, great. It could sound better to you and not sound better to somebody else. That's totally can happen, right? That's this is the world we live in. Everybody has different ears. Everybody hears things differently. Everybody perceives sound differently. And that's pretty much it. You know, there is really no wrong answer here. You do what you do. I do what I do. And if they're different, hey, it's just that different. Now, if you guys have any questions for me, definitely hit me up down in the comments below and uh, on whatever social platform you like to use the most. That's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, go ahead, smash that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I am your Techno Dad, and I'll see you next time.